Yeah, I suppose the TLDR of that long uh, wall of text is, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm not really enjoying myself all that much. And we're only halfway through the fucking game. It has its moments that I think it's like, oh, okay, that's good. And there's there was a couple moments early on that were were effectively subtle enough, uh, but there's been also a couple of scenes uh, that I think were absolute, just bafflingly bad changes from the original. Also, it's buggy as fuck. I've I've actually had multiple instances where I've had to restart checkpoint just doing basic combat stuff because I get caught in collision or some shit. Or there was one instance where my camera got locked to this position and I couldn't I couldn't rotate it left, right, up, down. Uh I had to the only way I was able to fix it was I had to fucking navigate through a goddamn uh vault, like through a window, and jump through it and thankfully that fixed it. Otherwise, I would have had to restart checkpoint, and I would have lost who knows how much. Alright. The map is completely unmarked at this point. Oh good, more combat that I'm gonna try to avoid, because the combat fucking... is frustrating. Like, I was saying this, um last night, right, um, god damn it, for me, the combat f doesn't feel like the Silent Hill 1 type of jank, or, you know, Silent Hill 2 type jank, where it's slow and methodical and deliberate, this feels like a company who has never done a combat system before, and they're just attempting to do one, and it's really sloppy and whatnot. And admittedly, that's true! Like, to be fair, that's true. Bluebird's never done a goddamn combat system before, so... Curse, how's it going, dude? We got 20 pistol bullets. Alright. I might have to, because there's a bunch of resources over there that I want. So I'm gonna have to fucking deal with it. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, all right. It also uses this Last of Us style melee system and it's implemented terribly and it's dog shit. And it's what enemy it decides to track and focus on is really, really stupid. I've been looking at... I, there was one instance last night, Soulstraw, where I was looking at an enemy and I swung my weapon and instead James Sunderland decided to target an enemy who was off screen in another room that I didn't even know was there. It was really bad. I was not happy. I was a very unhappy camper. Also, enemies are harder to- much harder to evade in this one? Cause that's the thing with OG- ye old Silent Hill is like... If you don't want to fight the enemies, you can pretty easily run around them and get away from them. So, like, you don't have to deal with the shitty combat. Evading enemies in, in, in this remake is, is a lot more difficult. In my personal opinion. Alright. I know there's an asshole here, but the, yeah, okay. There could be- there could be resources in the car. Yeah, and there were. Yeah, okay, target the window, not the enemy, that's cool. Yeah. 
And also, in ye old Silent Hill 2, there there was so many goddamn resources, so yeah, I can understand scaling that shit back a bit, but I think they scaled it back too far. While also drastically increasing the amount of enemies. It's almost as if the people who are in charge of balancing, uh, resources, and the people who were responsible for placing enemies and tuning their damage and, and how much damage they took and how much damage they received, uh, didn't communicate with each other. And this cutesy shit can fucking suck my nuts, man. button, but it's fine. Needed extra health anyway. Uh. Enemies don't show reaction when they get hit sometimes. It's really dumb. How's it going, dude? Ultimately, oh, ultimately, I just wish this was an original title and wasn't a remake of Silent Hill 2. Then I might be able to be, like, look at it a little more favorably. Like, there's jank, but, like, it's its own thing. But since it's remaking Silent Hill 2, I have to compare it to Silent Hill 2. And it could have been, like, a Resident Evil 2 type situation, where there are two different games, but they're both good in their own way at what they set out to do. But that's not what this one is. It's really funny too, because I'll praise the game for doing something that, like, I was totally expecting them to, like, drop or, or, or fuck up. And, and... Then a few hours later, they do the exact fucking thing that I was expecting them that, like, that goes opposite of why I was praising them in the first place. Like... The game was doing a really, really, really good job of not being overly handholdy with stupid, like, 
hint VO and anything like that. More dialogue for the sake of dialogue, and then the minute they fucking introduce Maria, all of a sudden there's hint VO and dialogue for the sake of dialogue. Uh, I was half expecting them to have this stupid, stupid goddamn cinematic for when they first introduced Pyramid Head, because, you know, he's Pyramid Head, he's iconic. Gotta give him a, a big, big spotlight, but it's like, oh, they kept, they kept the reveal similar to how it was in Silent Hill 2. That's great. And then at the chase sequence, as you're exiting the hospital, they turned it into a giant fucking cinematic for no goddamn reason. Uh, to introduce that Pyramid Head is chasing you. And they made it more bombastic with debris falling and, 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 and shit to jump over. It's like, what the fuck is this shit? Also, this wall mechanic is really goddamn aggravating and I hate it. But I am happy that people are happy. Like, that oh, that more people than not are really enjoying the game. But, for me personally, uh, it's just a very, very bad remake. Or a very mid remake. Stop locking my camera to look at shit! God damn it! And you know, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Uh, no fucking horror game needs to be 18 goddamn hours. But, you know, let's... Excuse me. <laughs> oh, let me guess. We, yep, no, yep, 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 yep. It's another, hey, push the fucking block. Cal, isn't it your favorite mechanic? Pushing blocks up against the wall. Good. More enemies. Anything up here? No. Oh, no, there is. Uh, can I get off of the porch unmolested? Nothing there. Said the platinum seems easy enough, so I'll probably go about platinuming it. Especially because it looks like on New Game Plus, uh, they've retained the chainsaw. I love delayed dodge. I love not pressing the button. Or pressing the button and then, like, it doesn't fire. It's great. Ugh. <sighs> 
Oh dear, Ronimo. I love smacking a nurse and her not reacting to it. Well, uh, they fucked up the pyramid head chase in the hospital, Jer. And... I, I've, uh, the other thing that you missed is I'm increasingly, I, or I'm, I'm much more annoyed at the game now. Uh, it's way too combat heavy. And the combat mechanics are, are frustrating. Uh, and feel cheap and sloppy. No, no, there, there, there wasn't. It, it just every bit of impact of 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 that elevator scene is gone. Every impact of Pyramid Head showing up is gone. Uh. Again, it was it was funny, Jer, because again we were talking about how all good when in Pyramid Head's introduction they didn't uh, do it via a stupid cinematic, and it was like, oh wow, they kept it like the original. It's it's subtle, it's effective, it's scary, it it you know that's 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 a good sign. And then for the chase sequence, lol, we're just gonna pause your gameplay and show that he's here via cinematic. And also, the chase, uh, chase doesn't work. Can somebody quote, uh, Kel? There, there, there'd have to be a lot of patching, Jir. A lot of patching. And also difficulty of balancing. Because, again, this is normal difficulty. I would be I w my my expectation for what this is in terms of the amount of damage that I'm doing, the amount of damage that they're doing, the amount of resources that I'm running into. My expectation is that this would be hard difficulty. Like in in ye old Silent Hill 2, you could get fucked up pretty quickly. Absolutely. But they also gave you Laura, please wait. that modern AAA gaming. Fucking taking control of my camera to make me fucking look at something. They not doing that throughout most of this run, and now all of a sudden they're just like LOL. And there's just too many enemies, Jer. There's too many enemies and they do too much they, they do too much damage. Every instance of a game taking control of your camera to force you to look at something is dog shit. Developers need to fucking realize that. And again, similar to the forced walks, whoever was the first person to come up with that design, I hope they have untreatable, uncurable hemorrhoids for the remainder of their life and that they live in constant agony and pain whenever they sit down forever because Whoa. it is such a dog shit game design decision yet people keep fucking doing it
let people miss something. If they want to focus on something else, that's fine. Yeah, Naughty Dog games uh, do that, like, hey, it's like a focus button. But hack game developers are like, LOL, we don't want our player to, to miss this story beat. We want them to know where to go, or we want them to look at the pretty scenery. That's also why yellow paint is a thing. I get that conveying where to go in a video game, especially with modern, uh, uh, realistic looking graphics, is difficult. So your solution should be, do something that makes sense to the world that you're in, or the setting that you're trying to do. It's like the yellow, the yellow, the one bit of yellow paint in Dead Rising uh, Deluxe Remaster makes no fucking sense, because it's only there to point out that you can go up top to fight the boss as opposed to pick him off from the bottom. Who put that paint there? Why did they put that paint there? The, the the implication seems to be Carlito put it there so you could fight him, and it's like, why would he do that? Yeah, that's that's the other thing too, is like if you're gonna do it, be fucking consistent. Like that's one of the things too, right? Naughty Dog in Uncharted 4, they have something similar where they have they, they want to be able they, they, they wanted to mark climbable ledges. So the player knows that they can climb and jump on it, right? Again, I, I'm not a fan of Naughty Dog games, but I give them credit for this. And instead of like slathering stuff in like yellow paint, it's like some type of different colored grass. I forgot what it is, but it like it makes sense for the context of 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 the world or whatever. Where it's like, okay, it's not just like a, a just some asshole ran up and slathered it with paint. It's, it's some sort of f specific flora that they're using, flora and fauna, just for these ledges. Is it a bit silly and handholdy? Sure, but at least it fits the fucking setting. It's not like fucking some random asshole is just like, I'm gonna slather this with yellow paint. It is, it is the cheapest and laziest way to point out where to go. Now fuck this. Okay, and now now we're back at a decent amount of pistol ammo. But for how long? Because aiming sucks. What? That was a delayed reaction, but okay. Well, most people who have been playing it seem to fucking adore it. End users and uh, critics. Apparently, shitty QTEs and janky combat uh, are are not that big of a deal, I guess. That are that are may again maybe I'm insane and uh, I'm the only one who finds the shit janky. The, the only thing that, again, I can't get out of my goddamn head that I do not understand is how anyone could call it a faithful remake. And again, 
there's nothing wrong with doing a reimagining remake. That's what Resident Evil 2 is. That's what Resident Evil 3 is. That's what Resident Evil 4 is. Right? It's taking the basic foundation and executing it differently. There's some similarities to it, but it's it's ultimately a reimagined, right? There's elements that are faithful, sure, but ultimately it's been redesigned up the goddamn ass. Yeah, the the QTs are dog shit. Just don't do lunge attacks. Don't do command grab attacks. I don't recall there being command grab attacks in Ye Old Silent Hill. I could be wrong. And even if they are, it's I think they just sort themselves out. QTEs are not immersive. They're stupid. I hate them. There's been large dis like Like, that's the thing, like, okay, force walks, I fucking hate, and I know a lot of people hate them, right? Same with this camera shit. Okay, yeah, sure. But, but, I don't know how, how wide the discussion is on these things, right? Oh, good, another legs. Whereas, fucking QTEs, people have been shitting on them and hating them for the better part of a goddamn decade now. Sounds good. I'm oh, good, we're injured. Oh, I guess don't- oh good, more enemies. Where are you? The main thing that bugs me is is the bloat. Again, there is no goddamn reason why this game needs to be this fucking long. None. Unless we're just somehow going to be speed running through the ending. Best viewers on get fucked, dipshit. Yeah, sure, show show the original map, yeah.
But now I know why also there was that shitty combat trailer from, what, what, like, uh, a year ago? It's because the game's more combat focused. Yeah, it's great. Immediate, immediate attack after getting hit. Oh good. More enemies. Higher ten bullets, okay. Like maybe one or two of those miss, but okay. Oh, that was a cough, but thank you. You're a cutie cursed. The cursed cutie. You really are quite cute. See, Neo, Neo even thinks you're cute, cursed. Fucking deal with it. You cute fuck. Hello? Anyone there? Shut your fucking mouth! Shut the fuck up, you cunt! Are you telling me there's some kind of Dracula? Okay, hey, good so job. I can't believe it. I'm proud of you. <sighs> hey, thanks, Newton Steel. Newton steel, Newton steel. Time to fuck around and see if there's any more ammo. Newton steel, Newton steel. Time to fuck around and see if there's any more ammo. And there is. And there is. You have to keep breaking my glass, bro? Yes. Yes, I do.
But yeah, ultimately, I wish Bluebird just made their own Silent Hill game. Like, an original story. Chances are, I still would be very critical of it and, and have issues with it. But at the very least, it would avoid comparison with Silent Hill 2. Look, unless, of course, they were assholes and, and their original uh, uh, game was a direct sequel to Silent Hill 2. Which is something I always fear that Konami's gonna do. And uh, my general stance is if anybody makes a direct sequel to Silent Hill 2, uh, or even an indirect sequel, uh, it's just anything that references what, what the canon ending of Silent Hill 2 is, uh, you're an asshole. Wait a minute. Oh my god, am I getting the fucking skipping shit again? Hold on. Or is that just that one browser doing it? No, I think it might be the one browser. Okay, yeah, I think it was... Yeah, okay, we're good. What about Silent Hill Neo? <clears throat> Silent Hill Neo Silent Hill Draymond Oh my god, we're using the wrench for something else. There you go. <laughs> the curse of Silent Hill has infected Second Life. Oh no! The curse of Silent Hill has infected World of Warcraft. Oh no! To be honest, I could see Konami fucking doing that because they're fucking hacks. I mean, they greenlit Ascension and, and uh, a short message, so. <laughs> oh, there you go. The curse of Silent Hill is in fucking Pokemon. Oh. I haven't watched Digimon or played any of the Digimon games, so I know very little about it. I just know that it is a thing that exists and is popular. Yeah. Rosario Nino. How's it going, dude? Thank you for the lurk. Wait. 
I don't know. Fuck your food cart. Oh, a brand new scene with Angela. Okay, sure. Hey. Are you... Are you feeling better? This place is different from what I remember. <clears throat> I guess... Things never really stay the same. Before. No one's ever really gone. Guess not. I don't. I don't think she's here anymore, James. Who? My mama. doesn't she doesn't want to see me anymore why would you think that anyway I'm happy to see you happy to see me Alive, I mean. Oh, yeah. I better get going. You still don't want me to go with you? If we stick together, we might just make it out of here. Out of where? This town, Silent Hill. No, it's fine. Okay. Oh, uh, you didn't happen to see a little girl around here, did you? A little girl? Yeah, I... Angela? Are you alright? Angela? No. Please. You shouldn't be here. Angela, it's okay. No, don't touch me! All right, all, all bullshit aside, uh, that was, despite being a brand new uh, cinematic, that was actually well done. So again, credit where credit is due. I think Pokemon was on the WB or UPN for me. I think that was basic cable. I don't remember. <clears throat> and then as a kid, I just remember, because I, I, I got a ta VHS tape from Nintendo that introduced me to Pokemon, because I was a subscriber of Nintendo Power. And they'd send VHS tapes to promote shit, to get kids to buy shit, you know? Uh, so that's how I got into Pokemon. 
And then I think as a child, uh, I heard the name Digimon, and because it, it had Mon at the end of it, and I was a dumb kid, I just assumed it was a ripoff of Pokemon, and I had no interest in it. Uh, and then I, f then, I mean, later on I heard more about it, and I would just, like, it just never got around to looking any anything into it. Couldn't be arsed. Cerulean night with the Cerulean dreams. Suraulio Suleiman Saru Sarai Serau Rau Saruku Oh then Monster Rancher I didn't hear about until years later. Years later. I never actually owned a Monster Rancher game. Uh, in fact, there was a while where I, uh, because it was, I also couldn't even remember the title of Monster Rancher. I just thought Monster Rancher and Monster Hunter were the same. And when I saw footage of Monster Hunter, I was like, wow, this looks a lot different than that, that, that you barcode scanning thing that I heard about. <laughs> I know we've been basically everywhere here, but I'm just seeing if there's any new items. When I reach the historical society, I will go on a BRB. But Sarah, you are cool shiz! You're the coolest cat around, that's why they call you Cool Cat Saru. Cool Cat Saru, he's a hero. Gonna take pollution down to zero. Don't you be shy. No, 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 ammo, no. See, Nero, uh, N Neo thinks you're a cool cat, Sarah. Yeah, Maria was bitching at me for going up here. <laughs> but maybe all the resources I picked up here were literally just for... Yeah, okay, phone. We're literally just for, uh... Late game, and I got them early. Gimme, 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 gimme! But oh my god, the game's actually like easing back and we we haven't seen a monster for for more than 5 minutes. I am impressed. Okay, it's just the historical society and the hotel. So I'm curious to see what stupid bullshit they've done to increase the length of the historical society and hotel.
Okay, we got 48. Still only have five. Cool cat Sarah. I do. Neo, you love shotguns. That's why they call you Shotgun Neo. I should be getting the hunting rifle soon. Yeah, I still haven't heard anything about Born from a Wish being in this game, so... I am assuming that it is just going to be paid or free DLC. Now, again, if Konami wanted to do the the thing to get on everyone's good side, it would be free DLC. But this is Konami, so I would expect it to be paid. Uh, and to be fair, Born From A Wish wasn't included in the original Silent Hill 2. It was included in the, the, the re-releases. Similar to Separate Ways. Now, still, I don't- I'm not too keen on the fact that it's paid DLC, separate ways. But at least it was priced relatively- relatively cheap. So, if Born From a Wish is similar, then, cool. Uh, but this is Konami, and it's the modern game dev industry. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, they charge, like, you know, 20 bucks for it. Realistically, I think a fair price would probably be like seven to ten bucks. Hey, all right. Stretch break time. Y'all go stretch. Y'all go BRB. Have fun, BRB. All right. Oh boy, what have they done to historical society? Which is one of the best goddamn areas in a video game ever. So I'm probably going to be extra critical of changes. Fuck it, more glass. Totally necessary. Couldn't wait until I interacted with it.
Oh boy. Wait a minute. Oh no. Nine eleven. Hey. Let me jump. I have interacted with it. Don't make it a three button thing. That's dumb. Same thing with breaching my hand into a spooky hole. Oh, hey. We're literally at the one instance of the game. In the original. Where you could break down wall. What was that? Oh, hey. So far, the layout seems almost identical, so that's neat. Maybe they realized that they couldn't fuck with this. Oh no. Oh, I love getting knocked out. Knocked out of the puzzle thing. What's over here? Nada.
Oh boy. Oh, for fuck's sake. Ain't no big deal. Just put the gun to their head. Hi, James. What happened here? Who was that? I don't know. It just came at me. Okay. So he attacked you. And you shot him. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He made me do it. Okay, calm down, Eddie. Any idea why he would do that? I don't know. He came out of nowhere. Tried sneaking up on me in the dark. I heard footsteps, so I turned back, and he was right there. And you could tell that he wanted to hurt you. Well, yeah, I mean, the way he looked at me, I just had to do it. He looked at you. I thought you said he came at you. Yeah, I mean, hey, I could see it in his eyes. His eyes. He kept looking at me, making fun of me. I told him not to, but uh, he didn't listen. Eddie, you can't. You can't just kill someone because the way they looked at you. <laughs> you should see your face, James. I was just joking. The guy was dead when I got here. I got you, didn't I? <laughs> well, anyway, I better get going. Wait. You're gonna go out there alone? Yeah. Oh no! Give me that ammo. <sighs> Didn't mean to do that, but again, it's fine. Yay. Should be getting the rifle very soon then. No, I need a key. Ah, oh, never mind. They they kept the the base the entrance historical society but like the prison which I consider part of it they've changed the layout. Oh, that's new.
interesting. A little bit. Oh, good. Another wall to break down. Why? You know, one thing I would love to see in a horror game, that's been an idea in my head for a while, right? Is you basically incorporate a very light RPG element into a survival horror game. Maybe you don't necessarily, like, make it super player-facing, so, like, the player is, like, completely aware of it. But basically, the idea would be, like, sort of a weapon familiarity system, right? So, like, at the start of the game, you're using your pistol or whatever, and y the speed to fire, because the character's unfamiliar with it, is slow, there's weapon sway, uh, takes them a little longer to reload. But then the more they use the weapon, the faster they're able to reload, the faster they're able to fire the gun, the, uh, faster, you know, all, all that fun, there's less sway because they're getting familiar with the weapon. Of course, the, the caveat is of course uh, that, like, you could potentially run the risk of somebody just, like, constantly swinging their pipe or, you know, knife or whatever to get familiarity to, to increase it early. So it's, it'd be like, you'd have to do it where it half the damage in an enemy or something like that, but I'd like that. I mean, there's a few, there's a few games that have done that, like, um... And usually it's like you, you invest points in a particular weapon, right? Uh, or a weapon style, like Deus Ex, right? Uh, you can invest in, like, shotguns, rifles, pistols, etc. Um, but I would love to see it in, like, an actual horror game. And it would be per, per weapon, per, per, per gun, that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Make it make it natural and organic. No like super gamey skill points or anything like that. The idea being like, you know, as a character is using the weapon in in question, they are slowly becoming more familiar with it and able to survive better because of it, you know. I think that would be a very, very cool mechanic to incorporate in a survival horror game, and it's something that, if I ever was able to make my own survival horror game, that I would want to focus on. Because, and, you know, you could also have that carry over in a new game plus as well, Jir. So that way, unlike a new game plus run, uh... You'd be, like, more efficient at using your... <laughs> your weapons. What is the point of these switches? Well, they can. I mean, the, the, the big quick kicker, though, of course, would be, like, since it's a horror game, uh, you would, um... You know, different ammo types, different guns, uh, different situations. Although, like, I'm kind of like, if I ever made, like, a proper horror game, uh, 
I wouldn't want to go like too ape shit ham with um the what the gun variety. I think I'd kind of stick to what's available usually in the f the first couple Silent Hill games, which is pistol, shotgun, rifle. But then also incorporate like a magnum, basically, you know. So you have pistol, shotgun, uh, rifle, and magnum as your guns, and then for melee, uh, probably like three, two or three different weapons, like a knife, for example. You know, it'd be faster to use but shorter distance probably do maybe less damage to certain enemies and then you'll have like a heavier weapon longer reach simple shit I'm also fond of how Silent Hill 2 handles its endings. Uh, where the ending you get is, ye at least for the, 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 the first chunk of endings, is entirely based on your playstyle as opposed to, like, some arbitrary decisions that you, you make as a character. Like, like, binary mortal choice shit. So I would kind of like to see more games that do that, but maybe implement it into, like, more of a gameplay sort of style. I don't want to go too much into it, but... Oh, you're not gonna let me fall off! That was one of the best parts about ye old sound. Fuck off. Like, one of the things I've always wanted to see as well is, like, uh... Alternate... Solutions to be able to, uh... Break down, like, like get through doors and stuff like that. So, like, you could, you know... Just search the environment and look for a key or you could uh maybe pick the lock uh, break down the door or something like that but like there'd be positive and ne negative repercussions for for whatever whatever you decide to do yeah basically what I, my dream survival horror project jeer is basically an immersive sim survival horror game like silent hill and resident evil meets immersive sim yeah exactly you break down a door enemies can follow you between rooms maybe it's louder so it'll alert enemies etc it's the same thing with like boss fights like i always find it a little weird that um in horror games right you can conserve so much ammo and evade enemies, right? But what you'd be forced into an arbitrary boss encounter. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure what, what this is for. So, like, I would love to see alternate solutions to boss fights as opposed to the, uh, shitty AAA thing, or the shitty game journal thing that people sometimes recommend, where oh, you should just make it so you can press a button to skip the boss. Like, maybe make it where you can, uh, sneak past a boss, or go an alternate route, and, uh, evade the boss, you know? But there would be repercussions for everything that you do. Whether it be... Uh... You know, like, uh, it might take longer to get to where you need to go by evading, or, you know, you use up your ammo, of course, resources, by fighting. And you can have stuff like that, you know, you're to, uh, how you tackle a boss fight, or how you decide to, like, get through doors, or whatever. Uh, stuff like that impact your ending. Like, I, 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 I always hate it when I see stuff of, like, <clears throat> puzzle skip options. Like, press, press the triangle button to skip the puzzle. It's like, for me, that's really, really dumb. I think that's, that's shitty, lazy game design, personally. 
I would much rather see, like, hey, you know, hey, there's this puzzle to get through a door. You could solve it to get through the door, or you could look for, like, an alternate path. Or, or maybe brute force, like, break down the door or something like that. I don't fucking know. Something. Yeah, like the Spider-Man circuit puzzles. I, 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 I fucking hate. Hate, 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 hate. That, uh, that exists. Because I think it's just really, really goddamn lazy. And you're not providing an alternative gameplay uh, option for the player. Not entirely sure what the fuck this is supposed to be. No, warrant. Which is why it's even more baffling that, uh... I figured you'd have to press two of them in a row, but... Doors don't seem to be opening. That's why I, I just think it's very, very, very silly. Like, why you would, uh... Why would you go about doing that? Maybe I didn't go into the chapel. Maybe there's something in here. Provide, like, an alternate option. So, like, you may be sacrificing gameplay, but you're doing a different type of gameplay. Right? That's, that's, that's my ideal solution. It's not necessarily an easier solution. It's definitely a more difficult solution. Because it would require, you know, more, uh, more game dev. But, I think it would ultimately make a better, more memorable game. Ow! Yeah, I, I want to see more, like, variety, stuff like that. I want to see that sort of shit in a horror game. I think it would be the coolest goddamn thing, personally. Because <clears throat> I'm fine with, like, you know, multiple endings and shit like that. It always adds, uh... Adds uh, variety to your game and replay value to your game. Uh, but one of the things I'm always like never really a big fan of is like binary moral choice shit. That stuff kind of irks me. It's turning on the lights temporarily, but I don't know what it's supposed to do. And there are these doors. I mean, I have w one weight. Alright, hold on. That's what I want, goddammit! Oh good, this has already been written up. No, well, there's something else entirely. Oh, okay, I get it now. Alright. That was one of the reasons why I kind of dug um, <clears throat> Amnesia the Bunker. It, it, didn't, it didn't quite scratch that itch, but
But I liked the fact that it was a horror game that had multiple different solutions. Uh... ...for the various puzzles. And how you progress through the game. And the order that you did shit. I liked that quite a bit. Okay, Headless Serpent. <clears throat> Didn't quite... ...go as far with what I wanted for it. But it was solid. It's really solid. And more importantly, it asked the bold question, what if we made an amnesia game that uh, actually had like, like, gameplay beyond running and hiding and, and uh, solving puzzles? Which uh, Frictional hadn't done uh, since Penumbra? And I've never, I've never played Penumbra. I just know that those games actually had combat. <coughs> I will say, too, I like that touch of the leg monsters crawling on the walls and ceilings and shit like that. Again, point, a small point in this game's favor. Well, I haven't seen them drop down from the walls or ceiling on me, but I've seen them crawling on the walls and ceiling. And I think that's an effective spooky visual, just because it's also reminiscent of spiders, but without be quite being a spider. Okay. Another thing I've always thought about is like, because a lot of horror games, or at least a fair amount of them, usually in the Resident Evil and Silent Hill variety, will have like, ranking screens. Like, you know, they'll rank your performance and beating the game and everything like that. And I like that idea, <clears throat> but I would like to see a bit more... variety, right? Like, Silent Hill, it, it tracks a whole bunch of stats based on, uh, to determine what your rank is, which is fine, I suppose. But I would like to see, like, certain stats award, like, point values, and so long as you reach X amount of point values, uh, you can get a higher rank. I think that's a, a more reasonable or accessible way to implement a ranking system. So, like, you know, of course, speed, getting through the game relatively- Ow! So, yes, they do drop down from ceilings. Getting through the game as- What the fuck is it? Getting through the game quickly, uh, would, would award you a lot of points. Can I equip the shotgun, please? But, like, accuracy would also award points. Okay, I take it back. This is fucking annoying. Cool, I love it. Amount of enemies defeated. So, like, so long as your, your your point value is above a certain threshold, I would be fine with that. Like, you, you get a high ranking. As opposed to strictly just, hey, beat the game in under, like, two hours. Like, I can't even fucking see that high.
Again, it's like every single time there's something I can praise, there's there's usually something about it that is just bafflingly bad. Well, that's why I want to have a ranking system if I were to make a game where, you know, going through fast, yeah, it can reward you with something, but it's not the only metric. So, like, if you take your time and say, I don't know, find every single fucking document or kill every single enemy, that'll potentially award you with enough points to get a high enough ranking. You know? be a tricky balance, because otherwise, uh, hypothetically, every single player ever, everywhere, on every playthrough would get, like, an S ranking, but... The TLDR is, I'm fine with multiple categories, uh, I just think they should not all be taken into account to get uh, the best ranking and should just instead be like you could focus on what what works best for you Yeah, man the ma mandatory speed run thing can be annoying. Even even if I'm capable of doing it, and in some cases I can I am depending on what the game is like obviously Resident Evil 2, you know. <clears throat> that is actually one of the things uh that I was kind of like very adamant about with um cuz I feel like some some games when they determine their ranking system uh or if they like have a speed run trophy Generally, what they seem to do is they, or at least it feels that way, they, um, have the devs go through as fast as possible. And then, uh, they base it on that. Like, oh, what's the fastest dev time? Okay, there we go. We're going with that, baby. And for Uncharted 4, when we had a speedrun trophy, basically I had all of QA go through the game as fast as possible, and I figured out what our average was, and then I added like an hour and a half to it. So it wasn't strictly, hey, beat QA's time, because I figured that'd be a dick move. Instead, I added quite the buffer. Which I thought made the trophy a lot, a lot fairer. I don't even know what the speed run thing is in for, is for Uncharted 2, but I can only imagine it's it's based off of dev time or QA tester time, since it always feels as though that's what every game does. 
Like, I know the Crash Bandicoot speed times are based off of that, and that's one of the reasons why I fucking hate the Crash Bandicoot speed times. Especially in Crash 1 for the, uh... Insane Trilogy? Because Crash 1 wasn't designed with those challenges in mind. Uh... So getting, like, the gold medal is a gigantic pain in the ass, and of course there's a fucking trophy for it, because... the devs are assholes. I hate it. We can take a little bit more damage before we use a syringe. Yeah, I, I'm not like super, super big into speedrunning. I'm like a very, very casual baby speedrunner. Like, if I really, really like a game, I will try to go through it faster, usually for like unlockables, because that's like a thing that happens. Like, Resident Evil? I want that infinite rocket launcher. I want that S rank. I, di I, I didn't even think it was possible for me to, like, actually speedrun and place in Resident Evil 2 Remake. I just kind of did it on a whim. After, after doing endless S-plus runs. But a lot of stuff, it's like, I have no interest in, in speedrunning. I, I just don't have the patience for it. Yeah, same. It, 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 it doesn't... I just, I just, I don't have the patience to keep trying again and again and again and again and again to, to really fine-tune the time and and make uh, my movement like pristine and perfect and all that shit. That's why I haven't really uh, as much as I there's that itch to get a faster time for Resident Evil 2 Remake. I haven't done it because it's just it'll take so much goddamn work and effort it's not to, like, disparage speedrunners and, and what they do. It's really impressive. I find speedruns to be very, very, very impressive. I personally just do not have the patience for it. I, I love achievements, but it, it, some achievements are kind of dog shit. <laughs> A lot of achievements are dog shit. Either too bullshit difficulty... Or too grindy. Or just boring. Right? I like fun, weirder shit. Like, I was really happy that we managed to convince the developers uh, on Uncharted 4 uh, to have a trophy that recreated the E3 flub. That was a fun idea. And they went with it. And people seemed to be very happy that we included that as a trophy. Yeah, I don't like stuff that's that's super difficult to get. It's fine to do like a challenging to a challenge type trophy, but but in some cases, I feel people take them way too far. I just gotta get one kill with the fucking hunting rifle. And we'll get a trophy. Because we've used every other weapon. And ideally, I only will get one kill, and then I'm not gonna use it until we get, like, to the end. Because hunting rifle, assuming it functions like Silent Hill 2, ye old Silent Hill 2, is the best goddamn gun in the game. So... I really don't want to be burning through all my goddamn hunting rifle ammo if I can help it.
Like, that's why I, I hated the, uh, I mean, granted, HD Collection is kind of a shit show anyway. But for Silent Hill HD Collection, they decided to make an achievement for getting a 10-star rank, which is the highest rank you can get in Silent Hill 2. Uh, and that trophy fucking sucks. That achievement fucking sucks. Uh, because 10-star rank is a goddamn slog. It is such a pain in the ass, it is so goddamn difficult. There's so many different bits and bobs of criteria that you have to keep into account. I don't like it. I don't care for it. So I'll never get a fucking... I'll probably never get a platinum in that. Not that I kind of want to, either. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's one of these assholes. Because it's the HD collection, uh, and the HD collection is dog water. Oh good, there's multiple of them. D okay, do you see? <laughs> Literally stomping and attacking an enemy. Which is still alive. And then James decides to slide to an enemy that's farther away. This is a very fucking sloppy combat engine. This is not a deliberate sloppy. This is not a, oh, the, uh, the character is unfamiliar with the weapon. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's you know, it, it, it results in things being a little clunky and or janky. Now this is a very sloppy combat system. Floor the whole So I don't know what the fuck. I just think because a lot of games have this problem, where they they have this auto lock shit. Because the the melee in this is pretty goddamn similar to the Last of Us melee system. It's just on R2. Where they, they have this auto-lock, like, priority thing. And... Games will just be like, LOL, I'm going to focus on this now. I mean, look at this too. Aceru. Alright, let's get it again. The ca well, the, the cam- now it's not doing it, but the camera was like, shaking and jittering, because the camera doesn't fucking know what to do whenever it's up against a wall. Oh, wait. Hold on. See that? Was there anything else I needed or could get? Talia, how's it going, dude? Sloppy toppy Kalia. Is it that sh that shit that always annoys me? As I I I want to target stuff manually. I also hate the fucking Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth lock-on systems. Uh, then again, I also hate a lot more about Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth than just the lock-on systems. Hey. Oh. This is this is the year for me being a fucking hater contrarian, isn't it? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is like one of the most critically acclaimed games of the year, and I hate it. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 Remake is another critically acclaimed game of the year, and I hate it. Well, I, I'll be fair, I don't hate Silent Hill 2 Remake. I am very disappointed in it, though. And I think it's sloppy and mid at best. 
and it's outstaying its welcome, and the combat is annoying. Or last year, too, you know, Resident Evil 4 Remake comes out, and everybody's like, Oh, it's so good! And I'm like, it's alright. It's not as good as ye old RE4. God damn it, where the fuck- where the fuck did I go? Maybe I am just a dirty contrarian hipster. An old man who can't accept change to his video games. Here we go. I just think that the industry did certain things better. Like, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Dear, I take offense to that. I showered daily. Okay, here we go. Okay, I was here. I think. I hope. No! That's Cal! And Q. The anime will be one of the the main things on Kyunami. Well good, the the spider the spider legs are here now. Yeah, an enemy idea I liked in theory. In execution I think they're really fucking goddamn annoying. Oh, oh. All right. I'm going to be RB. Get a stretch in. A Qunami, like Toonami, but with Q. I mean, we told her that one a while ago. It was great. BRB. Home skillet, how's it going, dude? Uh, hornless ox is over there. I gotta get to work on uh, adding more songs to the BRB. Yeah, it's cool. No eye frames, huh? Just immediately getting hit twice in a row. That's cool. That's great. Wrong button. Oh, good. You know, even Resident Evil 2 let you look at the map without the risk of being attacked, and also do puzzles without the risk of being attacked, and pick up items without the risk of being attacked. Then again, also in Resident Evil 2, I uh, never got stuck in collision by fucking stabbing something with a knife. I did clip outside the world when I get grabbed by a zombie, but that's only in one specific spot. On a staircase. 
Oh yeah, cool. And we're already at half health. From two spits. That's... okay. I will also say it's nice that they kept puzzle difficulty. Not a lot of games do that. In fact, not a, even a lot of Silent Hill games do that. Okay, yeah. And it's uh, very much something I would love to see more games do. So many squiggly motherfuckers! Oh, oh, home skillet. No, 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 my friend. I'm I don't hate it as much as I used to, or as I thought I would. Credit where credit is due, the game does a couple things right. But for the most part, this is a very sloppy, baffling, unnecessary remake. That is inferior to the original in almost every conceivable way. I need to find that fucking weight, but there's so many fucking crawling goddamn enemies. We don't have a key. Can't get in through there. Presumably there's something we can fucking override. We can't go there. Oh, there we go. No, we were already in here. Whatever.
Oh wait, here we go. It's like the most durable fucking pipe in the world, my guy. I am enjoying the booty. We always enjoy the booty here. Oh, it's, it's bloated and padded up the ass. Like, hypothetically, if your only concern with a video game is how long a first playthrough takes, and that it has to be long, well, then, uh, I suppose you're getting your bang for your buck. For me personally, I'd rather have a tighter, more focused experience that doesn't outstay its welcome. Actually, why I think Portal is the, uh... Between Portal and Portal 2, I think Portal's the better game. Because Portal 2 slightly outstays its welcome, although Portal 2 is also a fantastic game in its own right. It's also one of the reasons why I am not, uh... Super keen on Alien Isolation, because that game outstays its welcome like a motherfucker! It is way too goddamn long. I have not. They're intimidating. I know of them, and I think I own Pathologic too. I think. It's something I've considered playing, but they sound very, very intimidating. Oh, that's neat. Incidentally, a sequel to Alien Isolation was also just announced. Uh, with a goddamn text. Like, just a, a note on Twitter, or whatever. Uh, early dev. No screenshot, no trailer, no nothing. So, uh... I kinda don't really care, because that means, hypothetically, it won't be out for like five, six goddamn years. Since it's... Early game development. I know everybody's losing their shit at it, but again, like... Until I actually see gameplay footage, and that it's coming out, you know, within the next goddamn lifetime. I don't really care. It's like, at this point, uh, Silent Hill F and Townfall, uh, don't exist anymore to me. But yeah, I've, I've wanted to play Pathologic, it just sounds really fucking intimidating.
and really stressful. I don't know if I'm up for that, let alone streaming that. If all of these things come to life when I go through here and come back through here, because presumably we have to come back through here, I'm going to be very upset. See, that's something we gotta stick our hand into. Let me guess, I'm gonna have to mesh X three times. Look at those fucking beetles here. Yeah, we already hit search! Just fucking do it! Having to hit the button four times is not- is not fun. Okay, I'm very upset. Fuck all this, I'm not dealing with this shit. Do you see enemies there? fucking way. Oh, we can go down here. I'm 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 actually of the one the 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 the, the various reviews that are coming out. I'm I'm the one I'm looking forward to the most is Yahtzee's for fully emblematic. Because he was a hardcore Silent Hill 2 fan, and he was also just as skeptical as I was, if not more so. Okay. Eyeless boar, huh? If I do restream this, I'm probably never going to stream it on normal again, unless there's a massive balance, uh, balance patch. Especially because there's no difficulty trophies, so fuck it, who cares? Unless there's some, like, dank super cool reward for playing it on the hardest available difficulty. Hey, congrats! You sped, speed ran through that, didn't you? Go to bed! I always forget that you're in Europe. That European. Ha 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 ha! Now, uh, go complete, uh, Fist of the no North Star, Lo uh, Lost Paradise. You are a mad lad. That is a lot of Yakuza.
Well, the Fist of the North Star and Lost Paradise is uh, Yakuza, but Fist of the North Star, Jack. Also, if you have access to a PS3, Jack, uh, or an emulator, you could do Yakuza Dead Souls, which is uh, Yakuza, but a zombie apocalypse. Where the playable characters are Kiryu, Majima, Akiyama, and Ryuji from Yakuza 2! Hey, nice. Good. Dead Souls Jack, that's what we'll call you now. I gotta go pee pee. Let me in. Okay. I think that scare was somewhere else in the original Silent Hill 2, and it was just a, a brief scream. Not like somebody banging and freaking out, but I don't remember, even though it's been a couple days. Jira, thank you for the quote. Really quote. Oh, this is a memory, huh? Yep. We were also briefly stuck in collision when I stepped here. not the dumpster fire I was expecting, Jack. But it's not great either. For everything it does right, it does like one or two things terribly. Or bafflingly. Slash weirdly. Or, or... There's just... There's also like a genuine lack of polish. That makes things really annoying. And there's way too many goddamn enemies, and they have too much fucking health. But yes, it plays a lot better than Layers of Fear. Because, you know, it actually has gameplay, other than just hold, hold forward on this analog stick. Like, like, what is this, a fucking Dark Souls enemy? How is it taking so many fucking pipe hits? Uh, I might be. I mean, I would like to beat it and Until Dawn today, but, you know, I might take a break at some point. And I've been uploading all the VODs to YouTube, so... And prioritizing the release over other stuff. Because I'm like, hey, it's new hotness! Maybe I can finally blow up on YouTube and make some YouTube money. And no, that's not happening. Although for some reason the Puppet Master footage is getting a surprising amount of traction for my channel. Of all things... Good night, you, 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 miscreant. Can't break that door, zero to ton. Window already broken, zero to ton. <clears throat> I'm gonna go pee pee. What key was that? Upper floor key, huh?
pizza over there. Yeah, I, I, I did my best to articulate a lot of my grievances in writing to Soulstraw when Soulstraw was asking uh, what my thoughts were at the start of the stream. We did it. We have saved the city. This is the wrong cut. Damn it. So the other thing, too, that I'm a big slut for when it comes to um, survival horror, and not a lot of games do it, is the uh, level design of, like, the Spencer Mansion and RPD. The, uh, sort of Metroidvania type level design. So that would kind of be my, like, ideal survival horror title. Metroidvania level design mixed with, uh... <clears throat> immersive sim type shit. Oh, good. Wingless Dove. Uh, oh, it's the stairs there.
No, no. Oh. Trying to take stock of everything. Looks like there's an item there. Button presses set to hold, and sometimes these QTE, QTEs fucking fail anyway, despite the fact that I'm holding down the goddamn button. Which might be the first time I've ever seen that. Not done exploring. There could be items. There probably isn't. It's probably just enemies. But still. Oh, Lords, how are you making fucking noise? I love getting hit right after healing. I love taking damage despite holding down the button. I'm even worse than I was before I healed. Oh, for sake, how many fucking god... That was a full heal. Okay. We're not too bad. It's still annoying, though. Oh, hey, they kept that. That's cool. I guess because they kept that, that makes this a faithful remake, right? Right, right, Jer? Right, Jer? Right? Right? Right, Jer? Right? Right, Jer? It's a faithful remake because they kept one thing. Right cheer? Cheer, right? Cheer, cheer, right? Right cheer, right? Right, 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 right cheer, right? Geronimo. Geronimi. Geronimo. Oh, good. Another way. Oh.
Jitorius. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, button. Oh goody! We are doing a variant of the Hanged Man puzzle, huh? Fuck it.
mãe. Good. <laughs> Not quite. We're getting there. The final area would be the hotel. But even if we get to the hotel, Jer, I have no idea how long the hotel is going to take because everything is padded out the goddamn ass. I would say we're probably in the last 25%, 30% of the game, maybe? Because we still have this super underground area where we meet Maria again. And then the hotel. Plus, also, assuming they kept it, the, um... Rowing the boat on Toluca Lake. That said, I'm probably going to call stream soon, so I can eat some lunch. And then, uh, be back later tonight with... Until Dawn, and then more Silent Hill 2. Actually, this is perfect. We got a save point right here, so fuck it, we'll call it here. Because we're almost at the three hour mark. Yeah, the labyrinth. There we go. That's what it's called. Um, yeah, I'm going to send you all on over to Lebers, who is doing some uh, God of War Ragnarok. I'll be back later this afternoon or evening or night. I don't fucking know. Um, with Until Dawn and. Uh, Silent Hill 2. So you all take care of yourself, stay safe, be excellent to each other, all the fun shit, and I'll catch you all next stream. Goodbye. I